Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Morph OS, which is a pretty interesting and unique operating system because it serves a very niche market in the modern day. This is an OS that is still actively maintained and developed that's designed for certain PowerPC based machines. And its roots lie in Amiga OS. In fact, Morph OS is considered to be an Amiga OS like operating system. And Amiga OS is kind of a whole nother can of worms that would probably be saved to go down in a separate video. But what you need to know is that Morph OS was originally designed for certain Amiga computers that had an accelerator card installed, which contained a PowerPC processor. Now, when you think of PowerPC, there's a good chance you think of Macs, because Apple used the architecture in their machines beginning in the 1990s and lasting until the Intel transition in the mid-2000s. So, you probably won't find it surprising that Morph OS was eventually made to be installed on PowerPC Macs as well. In fact, out of the 11 computers listed as officially compatible with Morph OS on the website, site, seven of them are Macs, and we've got one of those computers right here. Of course, it's my Power Mac G4 Cube that I actually last powered on in 2021 when we installed Ubuntu Linux on this thing. So we are going to pop in the Morph OS installation disk right here. And we're just gonna reboot the system and begin the installation process. And yes, we are going to overwrite the existing Ubuntu install and just do a clean install of Morph OS and see what it has to offer. This is actually gonna be my first time taking a look at this. I have not explored this off camera, so this is gonna be a new experience for me as well. But from what I've looked at, this operating system looks uh, pretty cool because it's kind of its own thing. Uh, in fact, the OS states that this is a mostly proprietary operating system, though it does have a few open source components, but it is a commercial operating system. This is not free. You do have to pay for it. I believe a license costs around 79 euros. However, there is a free 30 minute trial period that you can utilize. And it's actually how you have to install the OS. And there we go. The monitor is lying to us. It says it cannot display this video mode, but it is displaying the video. Uh, but <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, oh, it's definitely on a super high resolution here um that's why it's oh my gosh this is quite yeah this is because of the capture card that i've got the vga signal split between that and the monitor here so uh yeah we definitely need to change that somehow can we go okay is there a way to change the resolution like without going through the setup and waiting for it to install okay english american key map okay actually i believe this is a live cd so yeah we can just hit browse cd here and yeah these are the contents of the cd so we we should be able to go, uh, if I can find where the settings are, that would be super nice. Oh, here, settings, system. Okay, here we go, here we go. Screens, um, we want to edit this. There we go, that's a lot better. Oh my gosh, I can actually like see <laughs> what's on the screen. Everything was so tiny before. But yeah, so, you know, if you just wanted to like try out Morph OS a little bit and get a feel for what it is, you could just kind of explore it here. But we're of course going to go through with the installation, although now I've closed out of the, <laughs> I've closed out of the installer. So let's, we got to find where that is. This is off to a wonderful start, isn't it? Jeez. You would think they would have like a big install icon on the desktop or just not let you close out of the installer because I literally don't like, where do we have to go? Applications maybe? Um, no, 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 no. Where's the freaking installer at? Tools? There it is, installer. That's not the same thing. Maybe iWizard, is this it? Like I for install? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> WB startup. Is it first flight? There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's go to just installation. Oh, okay. This is okay. So it, it was iWizard. This I just closed out of it because it wasn't that initial window that we got. So it is iWizard in there. Okay, great. iWizard allows you to pre-configure various system settings, set up network accesses, partition disks, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you were running Morph OS, like a, a prior version, you could go with the update option down here. Of course, that's grayed out for us because we don't have one. So we're going to go new installation, US English. That's fine. Okay, so we could have just gone through the wizard and it would give us the option to change our uh, resolution and display settings as well. So we didn't really have to do any of that that I just went through and then made everything more complicated. Okay, uh, yes, date and time. That's correct. And yeah, we'll go the American key map. 
mouse speed, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it kind of at the default. Oh, we got some different uh, options here. I do like this red one. Yeah, we're going to go with that, though. That looks to be the default anyways. So, all right, next. I do have an Ethernet cable plugged into this thing, so it's recognizing that here, which is great. We're just going to go with the automatic option because it does recommend that if you're installing it for the first time, which I am. One thing of note is there's no progress bar or any sort of indication as to like how long it's going to take or where it's at in the copying process. It does have a, a thing down here of how many files that it's copied over and how many kilobytes worth of files that it's copied over, but you know, it doesn't tell you the total, so we don't know exactly uh, <laughs> what that's going to be and would you look at that it did not take long at all like not even a minute or two went by uh since i last spoke to you guys so yeah uh we'll say okay and i guess we just got to restart so we'll uh we'll close out of this we'll eject the cd and we'll just go to let's see how how do we restart shut down reboot there we go so there's the boot screen pretty simple nice looking it also has oh no it reset the resolution again oh my gosh what on earth is it doing now look at this it's like <laughs> the entire screen like put up into a corner oh geez okay so let's go to utilities um let's go to or no settings system and we'll have to modify this again. Okay, that's a lot better. So here we are. Here is Morph OS in all of its glory. And like I said, I have not used this before. I've not explored this before. This is kind of one of those videos where I just wanted to go into it blindly just to kind of experience this uh, for the first time. One thing that is rather interesting and kind of odd is the way this menu bar works up here. So you have to right click to get these options. And then you get kind of like you have in, you know, Mac OS where you've got like the menu bar and all the options up there. So it's not up here permanently, but like this is not a button that you can click. This is not either. Uh, you have to right click and then, yeah, then it, you know, you can go here, my Morph OS. There's a little file browser we were just in. We can go into system and maybe browse the uh, the file structure a little bit here. We've got a readme file, which is probably going to be important to read. It tells you the supported graphics cards other supported cards, booting, how to, you know, make sure it boots properly, installation process, how to upgrade, how to report bugs, you got a quick FAQ here. And it does come with a decent amount of programs. Like you saw earlier when we were booting off the live CD, there's a lot of tools in here. We go back into utilities, we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, let's open up maybe the, the clock here. This is like a little bit of a widget that just appears on the desktop. You can kind of drag it around. Whatever the active application is will show up here. So ambient screen is the name of the overarching GUI. It's actually just referred to as ambient. But yeah, when I click on the clock here, you see that it changes to clock 52.0. I guess this is the 52nd iteration of the clock application. Let's go to about morph OS, kind of read the about info here. So this is version 3.17, the latest version as of me filming this video. And that's the other thing too about morph OS is this is a, a way, if you have an old PowerPC Mac that for whatever reason you need to use in the modern day this is an operating system that could do that for you uh, and it might be worth paying the 79 euros or whatever it is if you you know have an actual use for it yeah what i was saying earlier about you having to download this demo version to even register it there's no registration thing on the website you have to download the iso file for morph os which i know i've been saying that this is a demo version but this is regular morph os this is the full experience there's nothing like that won't run or anything it's just that there is a time limitation kind of a built-in time bomb that when you use it for I believe 30 minutes with it being unregistered will come up with a message that says you have to register it uh, to continue using it and you do that by going through the registration utility here and you click on next and it says right here software is initially time limited up to two hours per boot okay so maybe it's two hours I thought it was 30 minutes um, but yeah so it says you must register and this is kind of the, the downside and a very important thing to note. When you purchase Morph OS, it will create a unique key file that is bound to this particular machine that I've got it installed on. So you can't just transfer it to another computer. And the way it works is you would fill out your registration form here, it would ask you for your email address, and then it would send you an email, I believe, with a PayPal link. 
where you would pay for the license and then it generates that key file and ties it to this specific computer. So that is something to keep in mind if you do end up purchasing MorphOS, but you can try it out for free for that 30 minute or maybe two hour period, uh, as it says here, up to, well, it says up to two hours per boot. Uh, maybe less depending on version. Okay, but let's go ahead and just kind of explore around this a little bit. We'll see what uh, what programs we have. Uh, we'll go to the My Morph OS icon here on the desktop, and let's go into System. And there is a web browser that's included in here. I forget the exact name, but I think it's it might be under Utilities here. Oh, it's probably under Applications. I think Iris. I think this is the mail client. Yeah, I can tell from the. From the at sign there so there is an email client i believe it's wayfarer this is it this is the browser so we'll open this up here we get that same kind of splash screen which we still have for the email client here uh in the in the background so uh let's hope one of these starts up oh there we go okay the browser oh it's probably like doing some first setup type stuff here looks like it's got a ttf a few ttf files it's loading up or copying somewhere okay and that's something that i'm figuring out here you have to double click on a window when you want it to become the window that's on top so like if i click once on this it will make it the active window you see the title bar changes here but i have to double click on it to bring it to the very front i guess while it's doing that let's maybe browse the drive a little bit more let's see what else we got so we'll go to the system here. Let's go back to those applications. Yeah, you've got a VNC server. You've got what looks like a PDF program, VPDF. Yeah, so a little PDF reader. You've got, uh, yeah, some VNC stuff, LCD monitor test, uh, remote shell, Iris, which is the mail client that we're loading up. There's a benchmark utility or disk speed and GFX speed as well. And I gotta say this file browser is pretty nice. The way it gives you, you know, your like directory breakdown here, you can easily jump back to the root of, you know, just my Morph OS, but it doesn't get rid of the path that you were just in. So like I can go back to GFX speed. It's only when I go to a different, oh, and there's the email client. It finally started up, look at that. So yeah, this thing, this is like a modern email client. I mean, cause this whole OS is still maintained and developed to this day. So, oh, there's actually, it looks like that. There's an update to uh, Iris. We'll just skip it for now. So yeah, you could sign in with Google, uh, you know, right from your from your Gmail account. So it looks like you don't have to configure like mailbox settings and all that. I'm sure, although I'm sure you could if you wanted to. At least I would hope. Uh, oh, and here's Wayfarer. Okay, so Wayfarer 4.8 is now available. It looks like the network is working. It's loading the MorphOS page. Let's go ahead and download this new version. I wonder how updates are handled. It looks like it made this full screen. Uh, we can kind of restore that there and maybe re resize a little bit. We'll just get out of the mail client. But yeah, back to what I was saying with the file browser. It's nice because it, it shows you your entire file path until you change, like I was just in GFX speed. If I go into disk speed, then this will change. This uh, layer or this tier of the directory that we're in. Uh, so like same thing if I'm, if I'm in applications and I go back up to system and I go to classes, that will now change. That is really, really nice. You've also got some buttons up here for forward and back. You've got a, what I believe is like an info thing. And I guess they call folders drawers because that's what it's, yeah, docs drawer and applications drawer yeah so i guess that's what they're referring to folders as and something else that i'm noticing is you cannot drag windows like off the screen it is contained to the screen uh, which could honestly get kind of annoying if you're running at a little bit of a lower resolution you want to just like move this window out of the way and you know have something else kind of like overlap on top of it uh, but you can just resize the window and then be able to move it around and we'll go ahead and make it, I think this is, yeah, this is making it full screen. And it does take over the menu bar as well. It completely just overlaps it. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's try to go to YouTube on here. Now watching YouTube videos, we'll go to my, my YouTube channel. Watching YouTube videos on here is going to be limited by the hardware itself. Oh uh, yeah, the browser has kind of frozen up here. Lovely, 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 lovely. Oh, there we go. We got the search bar. But yeah, I mean, to be honest, like watching YouTube videos is something you're probably not going to be doing on MorphOS. But what I did read is that apparently you can use the built in media player and just like stream YouTube videos directly to it, and the playback is much better. Uh, of course, it does depend on what hardware, like, you know, everything would be much better on like a G5, like a, a Power Mac G5, as opposed to a, a G4 cube here. Oh, it finally responded to me clicking the back button earlier. Let's go to maybe Google. Let's go to a bit of an easier website here. 
So there's Google. Oh, so it does. Okay, so it's not like a. I wonder what this browser is based on. Okay, it is a WebKit-based browser. Uh, copyright 2020 to 2022. In fact, this is kind of reminding me of the Safari logo. Perhaps that's why they uh, went with it. But you can see here, like, this is not the modern Google homepage. Well, it doesn't display the mobile results page, so that's something. Let's try to go to my Twitter. Oh, it's doing something. It's definitely slow, but it's it's chugging along. Maybe it'll get there. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So it does look like it has loaded the mobile page. And by loaded, I mean almost loaded. It's definitely lagging along here, but it did technically display the page. I actually wonder what the, if we go to the, I think there is like a, yeah, system monitor here where we can view the current CPU and memory load. I kind of wonder what this is looking like here. Let's, uh, let's resize this window. Oh yeah, the CPU load is like super high there. Oh yeah, it spikes up immediately. So yeah, the, the CPU is definitely having some trouble here. Memory usage is pretty good though. We're hovering around 20% there, but yeah, CPU load is like maxing out. Uh, so yeah, maybe you don't really want to browse the web uh, and go to modern websites on this thing. I mean, there's plenty of other operating systems and computers that you can do that on. That you're going to have a much better experience, but I, I just like to, you know, kind of just mess around with stuff, honestly, and just kind of experiment with things, see what works and what doesn't. Uh, oh, and look at that Wayfair <laughs> crashed as we were trying to close it. All right, we'll just ignore that for now. But oh yeah, so nice little system monitor uh, utility here. We'll maybe resize that a little bit and have it down here at the bottom. But let's actually look at the games. So we've got Diamonds, which I wonder if it's going to be like Bejeweled or something. Oh, we got to beat Albert Einstein's high score. All right. So I'm I'm sure we've all played games like this before. But actually, I wonder what if we um if we open this up here. And we go to uh, about, let's see, puzzle with lots of shiny gems. And so there's the developers of it. It's got a bunch of translations as well. Got a few other games here. Pixel Cross. I wonder what this is. It opens up in a <laughs> too small of a window. Uh, warning, this game might be addictive. All right, we'll start the tutorial. Welcome to Pixel Cross tutorial mode. The following pages will demonstrate how to play this game. Blah, blah, blah. Use next to continue. Okay. Small thinking game is a combination of a crossword puzzle without words and Sudoku using pictures instead of numbers. The main task is to uncover pixel graphics without making... Oh, and there's the timeout. Look at that. Right as we were getting into Pixel Cross. So technically, we can still use the system. It says it will slow down soon. And it does mention, I was kind of wondering uh, about if it would reset when you reboot the system. It does mention that in the... Like, let's go back to my Morph OS here and we go to system... And uh, what was it? Utilities. And it was the activation or the reg tool here. Up to two hours per boot. And that was definitely not two hours. It was like 30 minutes. So, oh, this is the license from 2008. Look at that. Um, so maybe it used to be two hours and then they've like lowered it. Or maybe it does actually vary depending on what version of the OS that you're running. Yeah, it'll just slow the system down, I guess, to the point where it's not usable. So it says, you know, it like gives you time if you were working on something, which is nice. It does let you know, say, hey, if you're, you know, if you're doing something, save your work and, uh, you know, buy, buy a license because this is not free software. But yeah, I think getting this message is a pretty good stopping point. So... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. I will have this link down below if you guys want to go check out the website and maybe download a copy or perhaps even purchase a license for yourself. But as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.